G'day Ziggy D here and today I'm playing some Chronoblade. Now you guys have probably seen some of my prior Chronoblade coverage, but for those of you who haven't, I'm going to be giving a bit of an overview to the game today because Chronoblade just entered open beta. Now just to kick things off with some combat since that is the main focus of this game, uh, I'm playing a bit of the tournament. Uh, these tournaments uh, occur weekly and have different types of prizes including uh, microtransaction currency in the game, uh, in-game item rewards and things like that. And uh, basically they're a point score sort of challenge. Now the game itself is a side-scrolling brawler. It's probably, it's kind of a 2.5D style game where you're attacking and, mo and mainly moving on the, uh, the two-dimensional axis left and right like this. Uh, but you can also move between the foreground and background uh, along the z-axis like that and then attack along each one of those. So it's, it's kind of got that modern brawler style. It's two hands on the keyboard, key, like button mashing uh, sort of game and it's pretty, pretty damn fun actually. And uh, probably the most surprising thing about this game is that it's hosted on Facebook. Now I instantly get some groans whenever that's mentioned but uh, the game is pretty damn high quality and probably the best Facebook game I've ever seen. And uh, I was invited to try it a while back, and I was pretty sceptical uh, when I was first invited to try it, since it was advertised as a Facebook game. But when I actually got in and gave it a go, I was pretty impressed at the overall quality of it, and just actually how fun it was. Now, the game is your side-scrolling sort of brawler, but it features a pretty uh, pretty deep itemization and customization system with a lot of RPG elements, especially taken from action RPGs. And one of the developers is even uh, a developer who worked on Diablo 2 as well, so you can really see some of that Diablo style itemization in the game, which I'll point out later. Uh, but as for the combat itself, you alternate between light attacks like this and uh, heavy attacks, which are your, your slow ones, and you can string those together for different sorts of combos. As you see, I just pulled off a pretty impressive combo there. So I can do these heavy attacks and air attacks and uh, you know, dive bombing attacks, and there's also block, and you can also kick from blocks and do counter attacks, and there's quite a bit of depth to the, just the base combat moves as well. And then on top of that, you have different abilities which you can uh, put onto your hotbar that, uh, down the bottom left. You can have up to four different abilities uh, which depend on how you build your character. You select those through the skill tree, which I'll show a little bit later on. Uh, at the moment I have three abilities on my druid-like character, whose name is Lofi. There's two characters currently in the game, there's going to be four down the track. Uh, the one I'm playing is Lofi, who's kind of a bit like a druid, uh, a lot of transformation and elemental style uh, skills, and the other one at the moment is uh, a brawler sort of character, you know, with pretty much you'd expect from that melee brawler. Uh, th this this girl features this kind of ranged melee, uh, ranged main attacks with, with a little orb there, which is kind of pretty cool. Uh, my first skill is one that makes me larger and do more damage and have increased range. Uh, my second one, whoa, if I don't die, I'm going to use a potion. <laughs> uh, puts down this sort of sh little shadow uh, section there, which I do increase damage in, and it also does some damage to enemies. And then the third attack I have is kind of like an AOE uh, damage over time spell that you know puts a, puts a stink up that does a lot of damage to enemies. I actually missed a goblin there. There's even goblins in this game that drop loot. <laughs> As you can probably tell by all the loot I've picked up, it's pretty heavily loot based. Uh, you get a ton of different loot which you can either equip to your character and sell, and it's all all pretty interesting. So that's that's the that's the combat basics, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and kill myself against this wall now, <laughs> so I can show you guys uh, some of the other elements in the game. Now, as I mentioned, this game is now in open beta, and that's why I've decided to cover it again today. I go back and play it every now and then, as I said, because it's it's quite fun. Uh, but the fact that it's in open beta means now that pretty much it, pretty much anyone can jump on and give it a go. Now, uh, prior to that, everyone needed a beta key, and it was a bit a bit tricky to get one. So. I will go ahead and go next here, yet yeah, your point scores, I haven't won a chest, that's pretty awesome. Let's go to my inventory and check out the chest, and we'll check out the uh, inventory and loot system while we're there. So first up we'll open my chest, which I got awarded from that uh, there, and we got a helmet, uh, increased armor but decreased life, so uh, that sort of hints at the uh, the depth of the itemization system. There's plenty of different stats to choose between, uh, very much in your typical action RPG fashion. So that's pretty cool. That that helmet's no good for me. I can sell all these guys now since uh, none of those are really upgrades for me, I don't think. Uh, as you can see, there's different tiering of gear. There's your basic white items, which just, you know, have your base armor or damage. Uh, then there's uh, magical items. There's greener, which are sort of rare items. I believe they counted as improved, enhanced and improved. And then there's the purple ones, which are your rare ones. And I believe there's also uh, uniques or legendaries, which I'm pretty sure are orange as well. I think I've had one of those in the past. Decked out in purples at the moment, feeling pretty rad. 
Uh, in terms of actual stats on the gear, you've got a mixture of your basic stats, uh, increased damage stats, uh, increased attack speed, uh, lots of different, uh, as you can see here, there's like different, your main stats, your um, crit chance, crit damage, uh, elemental type affinities and how much damage you do with those, uh, resistances and some extra stats and things like that. Uh, and you can get a good mixture of these on your gear. As you say, there's plenty of different stats to choose from. Uh, and uh, pretty pretty interesting. The game's been constantly improving as well. When I first picked it up, the automation system was very basic, but since then they've added a lot of different stats and a lot of different types of gear, and it's uh, making the game constantly constantly exciting to come back and check. So I'll go ahead and check out the skills system now. Each character at the moment has two skill trees, and I believe they're gonna they plan on adding more of these as well. You can respec any time by just spending uh, gold that you accrue in game. And uh, basically, you sink points into each one of these skills. When you sink five points into it, you can move on to the next tier. So I've spent some points here on Shadow Shifter skill, and then also Heavy Hand, which are passive traits, which you can have up to four as well. Up to four traits, up to four abilities, and you can sort of mix match those however you like. And uh, there's the skills themselves are all pretty fun and interesting. There's quite a bit of diversity in them. Uh, and obviously the other character, uh, which for some reason I can't remember his name right now, was, there we go, Auric, has his own skill trees as well, but we'll go back to Levy. <laughs> uh, next up you have uh, your main story mode, which I've done gone most of the way through now. And uh, you, you just progress through this by uh, clearing each zone, and then at, so at a certain point you require a certain amount of stars to, uh, to continue, so you'll need to go back and finish earlier zones on harder difficulties. And then every so often there's these boss battles as well. And in addition to that, you've got your tournament modes, which you can access from here as well, and some extra additional bonus modes as well, like Heart of the Wood and Terrors of the Deep, which are kind of for fun game modes that you can also spend your tournament tokens on. So that probably brings me to... Um, uh, the microtransaction system because you know that's obviously with any Facebook game or any free to play game uh, the microtransaction system is a bit of a question you know how how intrusive is it and is it pay to win and all that jazz and uh, so far I've been following this game since early and closed beta and uh, I've not seen any elements really of the uh, strict pay gating or any of the really shifty stuff that you get from a lot of free to play games uh, there will be some pay to win elements because if we go into the store here I wouldn't really even call them pay to win elements but you know the, you'll have like soft boosts so experience and gold boosts and things like that uh, that'll come in here eventually uh, you can purchase some items with gems which are obtained through you know they're your microtransaction currency and these are like uh, some healing ones which the med pack arguably is kind of pay to win since uh, they can help you in the tournaments as well which uh, if you're willing to spend a bit of money on getting those med packs, you know, they can they can be a powerful healing item. But you can still be quite competitive with just the base healing items and things like that. Uh, you can get some equipment, but I've never really found it to be much better than the actual equipment that I uh, find through drops, so that's pretty good. Uh, in addition to that, you can buy some chests and things, but I've tested these in closed beta when I got a few gems for free, and uh, I never really got anything good from them, so <laughs> I wouldn't really say they're, they're too much of a concern. Overall, it's pretty good. It's got some of your standard stuff. You know, you got these tournament tokens that refresh every 30 minutes, and when you've spent them all, if you, if you want to refresh them, you can instead uh, spend some of your microtransaction currency to buy tokens and bypass the waiting period. You can additionally buy some gold, which you can spend on other things as well. So uh, pretty, much, pretty much what you'd expect, but nothing really harsh, nothing like... Farmville-esque where you get to a certain point and you absolutely have to pay to continue. Uh, you can go through the entire story mode and playing all of the tournament modes without paying anything so uh, pretty pretty quality in that sense of the word. And the actual gameplay itself is quite a lot of fun. In the future it looks like since they've updated their menu they're bringing crafting and PvP and guild support so that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm especially keen to see how they do PvP considering it's a Facebook game. They've impressed me so far with what they've been able to pull off and uh, It'll be pretty cool if they can, you know, put in some sort of uh, PvP mode as well. Overall, I highly recommend giving Chronoblade a try. Uh, if you have a Facebook account, then it's easy. You can just jump on the game and play it now. I'll put a link in the description. If you don't have a Facebook account and don't want to use Facebook for whatever reason, uh, like I see a lot of people mention to me, uh, then I suggest just making a, an account for gaming. Like, it's not really any different to making an account on the Ubisoft website to play Ubisoft games or making a Steam account or anything like that. But otherwise, uh, it might be coming to iPads and iPhones in the future as well. Uh, I think that's about it. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.